Lovely to have you all with us. Trust that God's going to speak into your hearts. Uh, my desire is that you leave here every Sunday that God has changed some area of your heart, that it's closer and more like Him. Amen. Last week was a we didn't po- I didn't post the sermon this morning uh, on YouTube because I was honoured last Sunday and I just want to thank those that some of those that were here last Sunday were not here but it was a rich blessing I really appreciate it and I enjoyed some of those gifts thank you it was really appreciated thanks for the honour uh, I really were b- I was blessed richly anyone want to share before I carry on. I um, made one of the greatest choices in my life 25 years ago and I asked my wife to marry me and yesterday I sort of did it again but this time I did it with a ring that I had yearned to have made for her um, and it had the privilege of giving it to her yesterday. She didn't submit and want to work with me so I didn't do it where I had asked her to marry me but... Then afterwards, sorry I didn't do that. I was, um, but it was just, it's just an honor to, and I want to honor my wife in this congregation. She, for 10 years, she looked after the children and would take the children from the mothers that they could sit in the service. And I want to honor you for being such a godly woman. And above that, I'm so, so thankful to God that you hear from him. in a way that for me astounding, more than anyone that I know, and, I, and I'm grateful to God. That's one of the major points in me marrying you, is that you are a woman that would hear from God. And I'm, that was one of my fleeces. And when that was ticked, because her gr- her, she told me that God had told her the day I took her out for coffee, that God was going to. I took her out from 10 o'clock and ended it at 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Can you believe it? And she said, actually, I need to go study now. So I said, okay, no, we'll call it a day. And she told me her gran was going to pass away. She didn't say God told her to pray for her gran. She said, God is going to take her. She warned. God loves her so much, she warned her. Okay? But she's open to his voice. And um, I went down to, I was doing my master's in Cape Town. I said, let me know if anything happens. Tuesday, she phoned me and told me my gran has passed away. Then I knew, okay. This is the woman. That was one of my major fleeces. But in any case, I thank you for God giving her to me. But I want you all to hear what I have to say. I made a choice. Yes, I was infatuated and all those coochie coochie feelings, but they don't always stay with you. Hello, married couples, 20 years, 30 years. Hello. You, they don't always stay there. Really? Yes, you are. Yeah. You have to make a choice every day to love the person that you chose to love. That's why the Bible says you need to make a vow. That's why you promise, I, I commit to you to love until death do us part. Because if you don't, you ain't going to honor it. And I once again, in front of everyone, want you to know I commit to you till death do us part. Okay. Right. Can I ask uh, Jed, Levi, some of you youngsters, come help me quickly. Just hand out some papers here and some pens. Please do a 100-meter dash. I know that's difficult because you signed fit, but can you do it today? Thank you. Oh, you're a darling. Give, give everyone a pen, please, and everyone a paper. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. They are the sooner we do it. Quick, 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 come. The more that they help, the better. Everyone, I want you to have a pen. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, Levi, 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 take that one. Josh, hang on, buddy. Jed, you're not special. Come help me. I need another hand, Jonna. Give one of those to everyone, please. Two of you. Three of you. Ah, here come I help us. Ablieft, thank you, buddy. Yes, sister. 
Some of you might need some more papers. We'll give them to you. Um, who needs some more papers? Everyone must have a paper. Some of you might need more than one. I need more papers, please. Levi Gedevi, some papers, yes, son. Give me a couple there. No, 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 give there to that side. Anyone else? You don't have enough pins? Did they steal them already? Only joking, okay. Go put some in there for her. Has everyone got a paper? Nick. Please put up your hands if you don't have a paper. Anyone else needing a paper? Everyone? They're, they're in the back in, you, in the sound room. Thank you. See, I counted right how many people were coming. Who needs papers? Do you need papers? Sarah Lee, can you get a pen, paper, and red things for those in the mother's room, please? Thank you, sweetheart. You haven't got a paper. That's not acceptable. Go and ask Levi for one. Do you have a pen? Are you going to write on a paper without a pen? Do you have a pen? What took you? Da, it's a lappy, da. Wat een van Joshua daar? Die groot man. Right, who needs a paper? Please put up your hand. Anyone for a paper? The Levi just give some papers there. Who needs a pen? We need another pen. Wat soek jy? Papier daar by die een met die hoed daar. What do you mean, I've been Who needs a pen? Who needs a, who needs a red cloth? Anyone? Go in, go, anyone with a paper for a paper? Right. Going gone. Right, you can put your paper in, a pen in your pockets, not for taking notes, okay? You can take notes with it if you've got other papers, but the paper I gave you is mine. Only joking, it's yours. It is certainly yours, but uh, you will not want to take notes on it. Ready? Right. I want to read Romans 12, verse 21, and it reads as follows. Romans 12, 21, 12 to 21. And there you have it on screen. It says there, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good. Now what is evil? Evil is anything that goes against what God requires of you as a child of God. Anything is evil where you go against his commandments or the things that he would require of you. Okay? That is evil. And he says we need to overcome evil with good. Just to detract a little bit, do you know that uh, Donald Trump was, they tried to assassinate him? And I told my wife that's the next thing they're going for. They're going to go for him. Praise God, he was not, we need to pray for the governments of this world. We really need to. Because Satan, that's why I shared the dragon is here. Satan is in full force and he's playing his hand like never before. Okay? That's what I shared on two weeks ago and that's what I posted last. But we need to overcome evil with good. And one of the greatest evils in this day and age is unforgiveness. One of the greatest evils in this day and age is unforgiveness. And so I ask you this morning, is there anyone in your life that you have unforgiveness towards? Anyone? 
You see, Satan desires for us to get offended by something maybe someone said, something they didn't say, something they did to you, so that we can allow bitterness and anger and resentment and malice and all of those kind of things to grab a hold of our heart so that eventually it becomes hatred. And in the end, hatred leads to death. That is Satan's modus operandi. So my title this morning is Forgiving Even, Even What You Cannot Forget. God wants us to forgive even though you may not forget what was perpetrated against you, knowingly or unknowingly. is irrelevant. God is calling us to forgive. I do know some truths that hurt people hurt other people, which makes it easier to forgive. But you also get sometimes people that hurt you that do not even, they're not even aware of the fact that they hurt you. You know that? Oh, you hurt me. What? I hurt you? Who's had that before? All of us. Another thing is selfish people hurt us because they're so self-absorbed with themselves. But the bottom line is, irrespective of the reason for which we hurt, God calls us to forgive. So tell me, who have you been desperately hurt in your life? Would you put up your hands? Sure, only a few of us. Are the rest of you liars? <laughs> I, want you show, I want you to see something. Who of you have been desperately hurt in your life before? Please put up your hands. Do you see everyone puts up their hand? It, we are not immune to getting hurt by somebody or something that has happened in our life. It will happen to all of us, every single one of us. You are not immune to it. And I have a sad thing to say is that all of us will have to deal with unforgiveness. Maybe not every day, but I guarantee you every month. I guarantee you every year. I guarantee you every decade. And that is not a where this is a um, pessimistic outlook on life. No, it's a fact of life. Because we live in a fallen world and the person next to you might hurt you, even if it be unintentional, that hurt will cause a possibility for unforgiveness, then resentment, then bitterness, then malice, then hatred, and eventually it will destroy your life. And that's why God says you are to forgive. Galatians 4.1 says, If you do what is right, Will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Sin is crouching at everyone's door. Whatever that may be, whatever that sin may be, and it desires to have you. One of the greatest, greatest sins is unforgiveness. Do you know that it is a sin to harbor bitterness and resentment in your heart towards anyone? Yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. That's not the point. Yeah, but you've never gone through that. That's not the point. The point is, when you harbor unforgiveness in your heart, you're sinning against God. But even worse than that, you're sinning against yourself. When you cherish unforgiveness in your heart and you harbor that unforgiveness, that bitterness, that resentment, do you know who it harms? It harms you. It doesn't harm the other person. The funniest thing is that sometimes people hurt you they don't even know. And you, you are walking with this unforgiveness in your heart and it is destroying you emotionally. It's destroying your relationship spiritually with God and they are living Fancy, free, they living life, not even aware of it. And you know what? Don't even care about it. How many of you sitting here with unforgiveness in your heart? That God is knocking at the door and say, hey, 
It's time to let go. Sin is crouching at your door, and one of the greatest sins is unforgiveness. Because unforgiveness, and Satan, that's why he goes on, goes in different ways. He goes at us in that area. Because if he can allow you to, in some area of your life, to harbor unforgiveness, it'll eventually be a downward spiral to your destruction. And I guarantee you, every single one of you have a right, in a sense, to have unforgiveness in your heart. But it is total foolishness and lack of wisdom to hold on to it instead of letting it go. Ephesians 4, verse 32, says the following. Being kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other just as in Christ God forgave you. We are to forgive others because we have been forgiven. We are to forgive much because God has forgiven us much. And you know that it is a commandment. God commands you to forgive. It is not a suggestion. It is not a request. It is a commandment. You and I are called to forgive. Period. Yeah, but I don't feel like it. It's not a matter of feelings. It is a matter of choice. There are some of you here that sometimes don't feel like Loving your spouse. But you are called to love your spouse. So you choose to love your spouse. Hello. Hello. Yeah, but they stood on my toe and it's sore now, don't you? No, no, no. You're called to love your spouse. Period. It's the same with forgiveness. You're commanded to love your spouse. You're commanded to forgive. Who? Everyone. Anyone that sins against you, no matter what it is. However, I need to bring a bit of clarity in this. Forgiveness is crucially important and it is for your own spiritual well-being and emotional well-being. However, some people in the church sadly believe that forgiveness and reconciliation go hand in hand. And that is not true. We are not commanded anywhere in Scripture. You are, can, you are welcome to go and research it. You will not find it. We are not commanded to reconcile. Let me clarify that. So someone f does me wrong, okay? And I say, Lord, I choose to forgive this person. And I go and maybe... I try and make right. And they say, okay, I'm sorry. And wow, that's awesome. What happens if they don't say sorry? Do I still forgive? Yes, because I'm commanded to. Maybe that person won't even say sorry. But I choose to forgive them. Okay. But even though I forgive them, they're going to do the same thing to me tomorrow. Hello. Hello? There are some people that you will forgive and tomorrow they'll do the same thing. And even some that say sorry, but they'll still do it again and again and again and again. Do you think God says you need to be reconciled to that person and put yourself in a position where you can continuously be abused and abused and misused again and again? Hello? No. That is what you call foolishness. Hello? If you have been raped by someone, God calls you to forgive that person. However, if he's, do you think that he's going to say, keep putting yourself in a position to, for this to continue? No. Does that bring the point home? 
So there are times where someone will wrong you and you will forgive them, but they will not stop. They will just continuously wrong you. So it does not, your forgiveness of someone does not give them the permission and the right and the ticket to uh, continue to abuse you. If you think that, you don't understand forgiveness. And many a Christian think that, well, because you've forgiven them, you have to be reconciled. Should you reconcile? If you're able, yes. If they are willing to be reconciled, yes. If they're not, let them go. Cut that poison out of your life. Cut that baggage out of your life. Hello? And there are some times in life that you have to say, here is his trip. I draw the line, no more. And you shall let you go. From this point and no further. Matthew 6, verse 14 to 15, it says, Jesus speaking, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now this is the kicker. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Do you know where he said that? Who knows where he said that? Where did he say that? Straight after he said the Lord's Prayer. He says this. Because it is such an important part of life. And it's the one area that Satan will try to trip you up. Because sin is crouching at all of our door and wants to have us. And not just the sin of unforgiveness, but this is one of the major in people's lives. And one of the things he says, forgive. Because if you don't forgive, I don't have the ability to forgive you. You take away that right to forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive you your sins. Why does he say that? Because if you say, here is God, but here are you. And you say, Lord, I'm not going to forgive, put you above God. How does he forgive you? That is why it is so crucially important when you have been wrong to say, I choose, I make the choice to forgive this person. I just want to repeat, reconciliation is not a prerequisite when it comes to forgiveness. It is not Go and study the scriptures. You will not find it. I'll read a scripture that all of you know, or most of you know. 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, are you his people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, and basically only then, will I hear from heaven, and forgive their sins and heal their land. Is that a conditional statement? Very much so. In other words, if we are not willing to humble ourselves, if we are not willing to pray, or if, we, if we are not willing to turn from our wicked ways, from our unforgiveness, or whatever the case may be, whatever it is, I will not hear from heaven. I will listen to your vain babbling, but I'm not going to hear from heaven. I'm not going to heal your land. I'm not going to bring change within you. Do you see that that's conditional? Forgiveness of those that have wronged you and perpetrated tremendous evils against you is a command, but not necessary when it comes to reconciliation. There are times you should try by all means, but there will be times that you cannot because they are unwilling. They will just tread all over your heart. They will see it as a license to walk all over you. 
and God does not expect that of you. Who of you have been hurt here? All of us. Who of you are battling even right now to let go of certain things and say, Lord, I truly forgive? There are many of you. I know that. Otherwise, God wouldn't have told me to share on this. You have a pen and you have a paper right there. I want to in ask you, and this be between you and God, not the person next to you and not for my eyes, between you and God. Those of you that are, if there's any unforgiveness in your heart towards anyone, I want you to write that person's name down there. Okay? And I'm not going. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to see your paper. I don't want it. It is yours. Okay. I want you to write that person's name or what they did and say, "This person really hurt me. This person. This person. Write as many names on there as you like. It is your paper. Okay. And it is private to you. I'll give you a few minutes to write down." If there's any of you that need a full skip page, can I get it? <laughs> Some of you have been desperately hurt. The hurt and abuse and the, and the unfair treatment and the word spoken over you has been unfair and painful to you. I understand that to a certain degree. And it is wrong. It is not right. It is not fair. And if no one else has the courage to say to you, then I will say it. I'm so sorry for the lies that people have told about you. I'm so sorry for the things that were said about you that were not true. I'm so sorry for the fact that you were raped. I'm so sorry
that you were lied about. I'm so sorry that that person stole from you. I'm so sorry that that person cheated on you. I'm so sorry that that person humiliated you. I'm so sorry that that person bullied you. I'm so sorry that that person deceived you. I'm sorry for what you may be even going through now. And you don't deserve any longer to suffer for the cause of what was done to you. And hence I plead with you to choose to forgive that person and let it go. For your own sake. Not for their sake initially, but for your own sake. For your own emotional well-being. For your own spiritual well-being. And your relationship with God. Forgiving has got nothing to do with giving your stamp of approval to what they did. What they did was unacceptable, ungodly, unrighteous. But you still choose to forgive. Because that is wisdom. And that is saying I choose to obey God. Because I know that some people never apologize and some people have gone. And they cannot apologize. Hence I pray that you will take that apology from that person as I've shared. And that you will allow God to come and minister by His Holy Spirit. And set you free from that brokenness and that hurt. And the devastation that it has caused your heart. The Lord's Prayer goes as following, follows Matthew 6, verse 9 to 15. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And I don't have time to go into that. I have numerous times, so I won't go into that. But here's the kicker in verse 12. And he adds this in the Lord's Prayer because it is so important. One of the greatest sins that is crouching at M most people's doors. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins, our wrongdoings, as we have also forgiven our debtors, those that sin against us, in whatever way. I don't know how, they, how people have sinned against you. I honestly don't really want to know, but I mean, I'm, I'm an open ear if you need that. And I'll walk a road with anyone in that regard. But you know what? I know that the minute you confess your sins and confess other sins against you and you say, Lord, I choose to let this go. Times of refreshing will flood your heart in restoration. That you can live in joy and jubilation. Because that's how he wants us all to live. He doesn't want us to live with baggage. He doesn't want us to live with the baggage of unforgiveness because it does more harm to us. He wants us to live in freedom. And you can only live in total freedom when there's no unforgiveness in your heart. And then he says something very important. It, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He Say, Lord, please don't lead me into a position where I can be tempted by Satan, even in the area of unforgiveness, whatever it may be. I don't want to go down that road. Protect me from that, I pray. And then hear it once again, I'll read it. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. He cannot. So because of the mercy and the love of God, I beseech you, brethren, to choose to let it go this day. I just want to say with regard, there's a saying that goes, forgive and forget. There are s the, it is actually a nice saying, but actually it's not the truth. Okay? Sorry to burst your bubble, some of you. Okay? There are some things that you will forgive that person, but you'll never forget it. I guarantee if you've been raped a thousand times, you will not forget it. But can you forgive? Yes, because it's a, you're called to forgive. 
But the Bible does say, forgetting that which is behind me and straining to that which lies ahead, I take hold of that to which God is calling me heavenwards. And God calls us to forget get the past, forget the hurts, forget the trauma, forget the things that were perpetrated against you. Why? Because they will pull you down and destroy your life. It doesn't mean that suddenly now you become brain dead in that area and you've got a, like a magic delete button, drip, erase. It doesn't work like that. Some, hello? We wish it did, isn't it? Sometimes we wish we could literally delete some certain memories in our life. Because I know there's sometimes a trigger that will happen where something will come up and you thought you've dealt with this and you have forgiven and then something and it, <gasps> those feelings will come up. You know what I'm talking about? And then once again you need to choose to forgive and let it go. So there's no such thing as a delete button. You can forget in the sense of letting it go and, stra and al not allowing it to have the emotional trauma that wants to destroy you, yes, that you can let go. But you won't forget the memory thereof necessarily. You can ask God to erase that. But I can guarantee you, nine out of ten, it won't happen. To us older folks, maybe that'll happen a far, far easier when you're younger. Your brains are on full fire. They don't, that doesn't really happen. Galatians 6 verse 8. In closing, it says, The one who sows to please the sinf his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit, will reap eternal life. When you choose to forgive, you are reaping eternal life ultimately. You are sowing in the spirit. I choose to forgive. And immediately, and this freedom that comes, and the cleansing and the wholeness that comes from the blood of the Lamb comes, washes your heart. And there's, thank you, Lord, I don't have to live with that trauma, that baggage, that hurt any longer. Just let me say, if some of you have any unforgiveness towards God, then it's totally misplaced. Let it go. You don't know the heart of God, so I'm not even going to deal with that side of things. If there's any of you in that regard, let it go. God adores you. He will forever adore you. If you have any unforgiveness against Him, whatever the case may be, let it go. You just don't understand His heart. I'm dealing with our brothers and sisters in next to us, even in Christ, enemies, I'm asking you as a brother in, in Christ, choose this day to let it go. Why? Because God commands it, number one. Number two, because it's for your own best interest. You're not giving them the right or accepting the fact, well, they, they can carry on having the license to abuse me, no. You are setting yourself free by doing it. 